In the latest episode of our podcast, Into the Killing, we cover the infamous murder of the List family. The police knew who killed the family, but it would still take decades before he was arrested and convicted. You can find Into the Killing on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, and anywhere you find great podcasts. Before we start today's video, we just want to say a big thank you to Redecor for sponsoring this video. Redecor is now on Android and iOS. Download for free in the description of this video. Redecor is a unique and clever game where you style photorealistic rooms and create unique designs on your phone. One of the coolest features is that you can design Monica's apartment for friends. Essentially, every level is a competition. Every room you design is judged by 10 players and then your score is ranked among 9 other players. Amazingly, I've even finished first a few times and I always thought I was terrible at interior design. It turns out that watching those home reno shows paid off. As I mentioned just moments ago, you can design Monica's living room for friends. Have you ever thought about how you would decorate it if you lived there? Redecor gives you the chance to design it exactly how you want to. So get your creative gloves on and have fun redecorating. Download Redecor now from the link in the video description, available now for free on Android and iOS. Number 3. Nathaniel Brazil In spring 2000, Barry Gruno was an English teacher at Lake Worth Middle School in Lake Worth, Florida. Barry was a passionate teacher who loved his job. He was popular at his school where he had two nicknames. Some kids called him Shaggy because they thought he resembled the character Shaggy in Scooby-Doo. Barry didn't see the resemblance himself. He was also called Chuck because some students thought he looked like Chuck Norris. Barry Gruno was 13-year-old Nathaniel Brazil's favorite teacher. Nathaniel came from a troubled home. His parents were alcoholics and there was domestic abuse. The police had been called to their home five times. In that spring of 2000, his mother had been diagnosed with breast cancer. Despite his trouble at home, Nathaniel thrived at school. He was an honor student and he played the tuba. He was affable and he was liked by both students and staff. May 26, 2000 was the last day of school before the summer break. That afternoon, a guidance counselor caught Nathaniel and another boy throwing water balloons. The guidance counselor sent both Nathaniel and his friend home. Nathaniel was angry because he was looking forward to that last afternoon of 7th grade and he planned on saying goodbye to his friends. Nathaniel told his friend that he was going to come back and kill the guidance counselor. Nathaniel went home and he grabbed a 25 caliber Raven handgun. It was a cheap handgun he had stolen from his grandfather's house a few days earlier. Nathaniel returned to school about two hours after he was sent home. School had not been let out for the day yet. Nathaniel went to Barry Gruno's classroom because his girlfriend and another friend were in his class. Barry would not let Nathaniel talk to them. So Nathaniel pulled out the gun, cocked it, and shot 35-year-old Barry Gruno in the face. He then ran away. 13-year-old Nathaniel Brazil was arrested later that same day. A few weeks later, in June 2000, it was decided that Nathaniel would be tried as an adult. The district attorney offered Nathaniel a plea deal. If Nathaniel were to be convicted of first degree murder, he would have automatically been sentenced to life without parole. So the district attorney's office offered Nathaniel a sentence of 25 years with a chance of parole after 21 years. They pointed out that they had a pretty strong case against him. Several people saw him shoot Barry Gruno. The shooting was also recorded by a security camera. Nathaniel and his parents turned down the deal. 
Nathaniel Brazil went to trial in May 2001. Nathaniel's lawyer argued it was manslaughter and not first degree murder. He said that Nathaniel was nervous and the gun was cheaply made. He claimed that Nathaniel accidentally fired the gun. The district attorney said that Nathaniel was angry that day and returned to school with the gun intending to harm someone. Also, for the gun to be fired, it needed to be cocked by pulling the slide back. Several witnesses saw Nathaniel do this and then aimed the gun at Barry's head. The prosecutor argued that this indicated that Nathaniel intended to kill Barry Gruno. The trial lasted two weeks and the jury deliberated for 16 hours. Nathaniel Brazil was found guilty of second degree murder. He could have been sentenced to 25 years to life. The district attorney and some of Barry Gruno's family on Nathaniel to be sentenced to at least 40 years of prison. Other friends and family of Barry wanted him to be sentenced to the maximum. In the end, Nathaniel was sentenced to 28 years in prison without the chance of parole. When he's released, he'll have two years of house arrest, followed by five years of probation. Even though Nathaniel was 13 when he committed the murder and 14 years old when he was sentenced, he was not sent to a juvenile detention center. Instead, after he was sentenced, he was immediately sent to an adult facility. Nathaniel Brazil is currently serving a sentence at the Jackson Correctional Institution in Malone, Florida. He is set to be released in May 2028 when he's 41 years old. In honor of Barry Gruno, Lake Worth Middle School named the gym after him. Barry's wife, Pam Gruno, spoke at the dedication service. She shared a few messages she thought Barry would have liked to have passed along. She said, hustle on the court. Crack jokes, but not at someone else's expense. People are more important than things. Always do the right thing. Don't take yourself too seriously. If you enjoyed a book from his class, talk about it, tell a friend to read it. Teach someone younger to love literature. Read to them. After Barry Gruno's murder, his friends and colleagues started a scholarship for students who wanted to become teachers and need financial aid. Number 2. Emily Beanart. In the summer of 1905, 13-year-old Emily Beanart was living at a reform school in Interbog, which was a village in Germany. She had been abandoned there by her parents. Emily tried to escape three times, but she was caught and brought back to the school every time. For escaping, she received a harsh punishment doled out by a teacher and the head of the school, Sister Clara. Emily decided she would get her revenge on Sister Clara. She knew that every night Sister Clara would drink a glass of brandy before bed. So Emily got some wild poisonous cherries. She steeped them in brandy and then set a glass of the poisoned brandy on Sister Clara's dressing table. That night, Emily told the other students that Sister Clara was going to die and soon someone nicer would take over. Much to Emily's surprise, Sister Clara was there the next morning, alive and well. It turned out that Sister Clara noticed something off with the color of her brandy, so she threw it out without taking a drink. Then, Emily managed to steal some sulfuric acid from a factory. She poured some of the acid into Sister Clara's glass of water. Sister Clara took a sip and immediately noticed something was wrong. The acid ended up corroding her lips, but she survived. Emily was not satisfied that she had just scarred her teacher by having her drink acid. The 13-year-old was committed to killing Sister Clara. Emily somehow got her hands on some white lead. 
She makes the white lead and it's Sister Clara's coffee. Sister Clara drank the coffee without noticing the white lead. Hours later, Sister Clara became violently ill. After several agonizing hours, she died. It did not take long for investigators to figure out that Emily had poisoned the coffee. She was arrested and sentenced to 18 months of imprisonment. It's not clear what happened to Emily Beanert after she was sentenced, but she served her entire sentence she would have been out before she was 15 years old. Number 1. John Christian In the spring of 1978, 29-year-old Wilbur Grayson, who went by Rod, was an English teacher at Maturson Junior High School. The school is in an affluent neighborhood in Austin, Texas. On the morning of May 18, 1978, Grayson was teaching English to 21 students. Grayson, who was a husband and the father of a son who was 11 months old, had only been teaching at the school for two semesters. He was known to be tough because he tried to push his students to get the best work out of them. At around 9 a.m., one of his students, 13-year-old John Daniel Christian, walked into the school. John was armed with a 22 caliber rifle. John was well known at the school because he was in many of the school's plays. He also came from a prominent family. They lived in a nice house close to the school. His father, George Christian, had been the press secretary for President Lyndon Johnson from 1966 to 1969. He then went on to become an advisor to the governor of Texas. John's mother, Joanne, was a prominent lawyer and she was well known in Austin's elite social circles. While his parents were successful, they were described as being a big hold and distant. They had great expectations for John and John felt overwhelmed by those expectations. The day before John came to school with the gun, Rod Grayson had stayed home with his sick son. While Grayson was away, John was supposed to give a presentation in Grayson's class about a chapter in Harry Beecher Stowe's classic book, Uncle Tom's Cabin. Instead, John acted manically in front of the class. He did not talk about the book at all. Instead, he ranted and raved and drew a picture of a couple in bed on the chalkboard. John was told that Grayson would be angry when he heard about his behavior. John replied, don't worry, I'll bring a gun tomorrow. His friend thought he was joking. After entering the school, John walked into Grayson's class. Grayson was sitting on his stool in front of 21 pupils. John aimed the gun at Grayson, but Grayson wasn't intimidated. This was 21 years before the Columbine school shooting changed the perception of kids with guns in school. Grayson said something to the effect of, the joke is up. 13 year old John said, the joke's on you, and they shot Grayson in the head, arm, and chest. After shooting his teacher, John calmly walked out of the classroom. Outside the school, he tossed away the gun and started to walk off the campus. He was grabbed by a gym teacher and brought back to the principal's office. Somehow, John's mother arrived at the school before the police made it there. 29-year-old Rod Grayson was pronounced dead at the school. John never publicly gave a reason for killing Grayson. But there is speculation that was because Grayson gave John, who had straight A's, a failing grade. Since John was 13 at the time of the murder, the harshest sentence he could have received was being held in a juvenile detention center or a reform school until he was 18 years old. The district attorney said that he was planning on seeking the maximum punishment so John would have had to stay in a juvenile detention center or reform school for five years. 
but that did not happen. John's lawyer had two psychiatrists examine him. They both said that he was acutely depressed and he had schizophrenia. The district attorney did not have any evidence or have anyone testify to contradict the psychiatrist's conclusions. The judge ordered John to stay in a psychiatric hospital until he was 18 or until he was deemed mentally healthy. John was then admitted to a private psychiatric hospital in Dallas, Texas. He spent about 20 months in the psychiatric hospital and then he was released. John graduated from high school and he went to university. He eventually became a lawyer. According to an April 2020 Texas Monthly article, he lives in Austin where he works as a tax attorney. At the time of this video, John Christian is 56 years old. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Redecor. Right now, you can design Monica from Friends Living Room. You can download Redecor from the link below this video. But that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.